Last night in Daytona, new team owner Brad Keselowski celebrated as both a driver and an owner. He and Jack Roush and Fenway Sports Group going to victory lane not once but twice. A lot of drama. Denny Hamlin overcooks it, was afraid he was going to miss the commit line. Made a sharp turn, locked up the brake, round he went, coming to pit road. And then on the final lap of the second race, Joey Logano tries to block Chris Buescher with disastrous results. And we'll go to a backup car for Sunday. Just some of the stories we're going to follow up on on this cup practice session presented by Toyota. Busy night last night, 150 miles of racing times two to set the lineup for the Daytona 500. Mike Joy with Clint Boyer. What'd you learn last night that you want to work on today? Well, all right, I'm going to use Kyle Larson for a prime example. In that first duel, he made a reference to his crew chief. Didn't like how that car got light getting into the corner, especially when his teammate was pushing him hard. Those are the things you can't have in a Daytona 500. You need that baby to have some grip underneath of it, and those are things I guarantee you all these teams are going to work on. Needs to handle and drive well for a long time. All right, let's go back to the last lap of the second dual race, and Joey Logano trying to protect his lead against Chris Buescher. White flag, you're clear. Half off. He is clear. That's he Logano's is clear. Spotter, Coleman Presley. He's clear with you. Clear with you. Clear with you. Clear with you on. Right, still there. He's backing up a little bit. You're clear. He's on and clear. Ball of Bond going inside, inside, inside. Got more cars coming off too. I thought I was still clear. A tough night, a tough finish for Joey Logano, who took it all on his shoulders. He said the worst I could have finished was fourth if I'd let him go. And he ends up with a wadded up race car. Jamie Little. Joey Logano was very upset with himself after that. And just before we went off the air, we had confirmed he would be going to a backup car. They're one of the few teams that had a backup car here and ready to go. The team, though, had to come in this morning at 10.30 in the morning. They worked on it for seven hours to get it ready for this practice session. Now Joey, one of the first drivers that strapped in, ready to go out there, make sure this car is comfortable, make sure it gets up to speed, and make sure there's no leaks or any issues with it. So we'll be watching this 22 car throughout this practice session, Mike. And last night after that crash, Logano stayed, helped remove the seat from his car to transfer it into the backup so it's ready for today. Wow. From the GM Heritage Collection, that is Firebird 1. It was a styling exercise and dream car of the early 50s, a product of Harley J. Earl, chief stylist at General Motors. In fact, that emblem is still used by GM for the GM Air Transport Service, and it's Firebird 1 atop the trophy that goes to the Daytona 500 winner. Well, let's check with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, my takeaway from the dual race last night, I can't do anything about it on a Sunday, but one thing that I learned in a huge way is I want to stay with the lead pack. Even if it's sacrificing putting on four tires, just go with those two tires. But I still want to learn what this car reacts to. Our pages in our notebook are very thin. So if I can utilize this practice and the one tomorrow just to make changes on the car, to cleanse point, maybe make it go a little bit faster without sacrificing handling. And the other thing you have to remember, now that we're getting into races every day and every night, this track is going to continue to change. So that's one reason I would be very hesitant of skipping either one of these next two practices. I need to allude a little bit and add to what I said at the top of the show, and that is the fact that I feel like right now, leaving those duels, everybody in the garage area feels that those Fords are fa the fastest cars, right? They're the ones to beat. Obviously, they won both races. That being said, if you're a Chevrolet camp, I need to find some more speed in my car. Maybe have to sacrifice some handling for speed. Maybe that's what it's going to take to outduel those guys in, in this Daytona 500. We're cleaning up a little debris from Xfinity practice. Clint, the most dramatic thing that I saw last night was that if one car fell three, four car lengths back from the draft yeah. that they were trailing, they dropped like a rock. And you heard Larry just talk about that, and, and it's real. You know, not only did we see, you know, cars that maybe 
you would have thought maybe couldn't hold on. It was powerhouse teams. SHR, two of the three of those cars had lost the draft. Some big name drivers had just made a mistake, got out of the wake and lost the draft. Prepping the track, we should have cars on track when we come back. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Series practice, part of Daytona Speed Weeks, presented by Advent Health. Let's go to the garage and check with Jamie Little. Yeah, Kevin Harvick was someone we kept an eye on last night in his dual race. He was running in the draft, and then he got shaken out of the draft, or, um, yes, I just talked to him, and he got in his car. He said, man, it's the weirdest thing with this car. You lose the draft, and you fall back, and then he ended up getting lapped. So he'll start 22nd on Sunday. He's in his car ready to go, but they're going to go out with a group. They're going to go out with their teammates. He wants to run and, and just work on those fundamentals that aren't coming second nature with this new car, Mike. A couple of the things that can be done. How do you help that, right? You're looking in the mirror, your teammate is losing the draft. You need to fan out. Widen that path, that wake in front of him, enabling him to pull up even better with a wider wake in front. That, that's something that he was mad at, very vocal in his radio. Of, uh, uh, actually, it was Harrison Burton, as a matter of fact, and, and, and you know, that could be a rookie thing. You know, that's something that Harrison's never felt before. He's never had that need, never, never realized that. Uh, with this new car, you're going to have to do some of that. Team Hendrick is first on track, led by William Byron, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Alex, what did Shannon Spake call him? Front row bow. Yeah. Five in a row here at Daytona. Pretty unbelievable. Greg Ives and company sure knows how to. They always keep something up the old sleeve, <laughs> Mike. Some kind of secret sauce. But it's, again, I said it that night. It's one thing to outduel the competition, but you've got three other cars in your stable that have the same parts and pieces that you do. All the same toys to work with, and somehow he's always able to have a little bit of edge on even them. Well, you were part of a four-car multi-car team at Stuart Haas. It had to be especially rewarding. You could put a lap up in practice or in the race that was faster than everyone else that had the exact same resources you did. I think that's the, the hardest thing to, to obtain in all of motorsports when you have a multi-car team is keeping them from racing one another. Hundred eighty five miles an hour and Joey Logano is on track with his backup car. Fresh hot time run. Yep. New horse. Seems to drive pretty good, Mike. Yep. So what are we trying to do? All right, we got a brand new car. We're going to unload this thing. We're going to put it out there. You know, with the new new shocks and everything, the suspension components that we have on these cars, it's really an eye-to-eye -eye shock measurement. You know, you, you don't need to scale these cars anymore. All of that, the ride heights and everything are built and designed on the on the simulation program. They get those eye-to-eye -eye measurements, put them babies on, bolt those four shocks and springs on this thing, and go, cat, go. Now they're just validating all of that. We don't want to, we want to go out there and make sure nothing's dragging, no oil leaks, no, you know, all those problems got to be by the wayside on oil, water coolant, all those things. Make sure nothing happens to this thing. The other thing that I'm a little bit concerned of, we've seen some throttle cables. You know, again, when you think about pulling out a different car, those are some things that you will overlook. Make sure all of those things are taken care of. Here's Stuart hey, Haas. guys, I think this 22 car is in pretty good shape, Mike. He qualified at 50-16 the other night. He just, his first lap was a 49-96. Yeah, it looks like everybody has picked up here on uh, Friday afternoon. Of course, other cars have been on track today. And let's get with Jamie and visit with the defending 500 champ. And that's Michael McDowell standing here just waiting for your guys to get your car ready. What's your game plan for this one-hour session? Well, being that we have two extra practices here, you know, there's some things we still didn't get to try that we wanted to try. So 
Um, last night went pretty good. Love Travel Stop Ford Mustang was fast, but we want to try a few things. So going to try to use this practice, see what we can learn, find a little bit more speed. Uh, everything will help for Sunday. Love that smile. I don't think you've stopped smiling since you unloaded here at Daytona. Yeah, thank you. It's been fun. It's been fun coming back here and having another shot at a Daytona 500 uh, win would be awesome. Thanks, Michael. Well, he was in position last night. He was in that top four draft coming to the flag in the second 150 miler. Wound up second. Somehow he's always, I mean, even when I was racing, you look over your shoulder at the end, in particular, the end of a race like this, and look over, and lo and behold, there's Michael McDowell making a move on you. So here comes a group of 10, maybe 11. And this doesn't surprise me. Obviously, they're going to mind their uh, P's and Q's here, probably get in line and run, but you need a big pack, right, to feel the air on these racetracks like Daytona and Talladega, you need the biggest pack as possible. That way you can give that crew chief, old Larry down there, the best information possible. Last night, it seemed that four cars was the sweet spot. If cars were going to line up and post some consistently fast times, you needed four or more. And coincidentally, four is the maximum number of cars that any one organization can field in this series. And I'll tell you why, and I think I saw it a little bit with this new car, but we used to see it all the time with the old car. If you have too many, they get to like a chain, right? Everybody's not keeping that chain tight. And it's got to be tight to have some performance. If they get to slinking, it'll pull actually that pulls the lap time and slows you down. I think you might be able to see it right here. Hip bone connected to the knee bone. And well, see, so one car push it in, so that's and that's what they need to work on because honestly, that's what they couldn't do last night. The duels and the Fords could. They could pull up on their own, push that car in front of them, and push through that weight. The Chevrolets were having trouble doing that. Maybe just like I said, put some speed into this race car. Might be at the expense of some handling. And I wonder about the Toyotas. They didn't qualify that well. They really didn't race that well on Thursday night. But we're used to seeing that whole Toyota brigade come down here and really not show their strength until Sunday. Until that pay window's open. Funny how that works. <laughs> and there they are. But certainly, I think they're in the same boat. I've been talking about the Chevrolets trying to keep up. They're in the same boat. The Chevrolet was against the Fords from what we saw last night. Guarantee you they were in there in a, in a big debrief meeting talking about, all right, boys, somehow, some way, getting them computers, I need to go a little bit faster. I need to push through that wake. I need to be able to bump drop just a little bit more. Well, can can you can you handle taking away a little bit of handling? Well, how much, right? So that's the guess, and that's why you have these two practice sessions. But I like what I saw there from the Hendrick group is that little progressive bump draft that started with the fourth place car into the third place car and worked it all the way to the front. And uh, we'll see how that translated to lap times. You have to keep, again, going back to that chain, it has to stay, you know, taut. And if it's not, you're, you're gonna have that slinky chain and it'll slow you down. Meanwhile, look at the speed chart. Beard Motorsports, the smallest team here. One full-time employee. They run Daytona and Talladega. They're sixth in this pack. Uh, in this group here and Noah Gregson who replaced a uh, fellow Las Vegan Brendan gone when Brendan retired to drive for this Michigan based team he has the fastest lap of practice how about that they might have one employee but that one employee is smart enough to buy the right <laughs> stuff that's what I'm gonna say hey look at here you see those Hendrick cars pushing each other pretty hard had uh, Kyle Larson you know, been out of shape a little bit with Chase Elliott pushing him really hard. And that's something that you couldn't see these guys doing. So pretty impressive. Made some changes for sure. The thing that I do see with this chain right here is see how the 24 can't keep up. For some reason, those three are having trouble. Those front two can really latch on, but the 24 and the 48, they're having a little bit of trouble. You get here in this thing, see bumper to bumper to bumper to bumper. Now these are all the rest of the Chevrolets in that second group. Now they're both. Whew. Easy, Willie B. Got to be careful. 
Chase Elliott can definitely push better than than he could last night. Tyler Reddick at the front of this group. Austin Dillon, his teammate, right with him. Then the Petty GMS. Whoa, GMS cars of Eric Jones and Ty Dillon. Just about wiped two RCR cars out right there. That's as close as it gets. Turned him sideways, getting into the corner. Heck of a save for Tyler Reddick. Now you saw sparks flying from the left front corner of Reddick's car as the nose got down on the apron with this new car Larry what is wearing there and how much damage is that doing yeah there's it's almost like a little bit of a rub block underneath the front splitter Mike and it's certainly something you don't want rubbing because anytime any part of that race car is bottoming out on the racetrack it's scrubbing speed so but you're going to see that a lot we even saw it with some cars qualifying the other night that got just a little too low in the quarter Justin Haley in particular that just bottomed out right there. I think you're testing the limits of it here, Clint. Now, their times, though, are about three tenths slower than that other group we just saw and with this, more cars in it. That's a great point where I was going with this. All right, so now the old fashioned people didn't like the tandem. I didn't. I, well, I, maybe I liked it. I won a couple of races doing it. But that <laughs> being said, they're not having success doing it. If those two cars lock, uh, lock up and are able to go ahead and advance and, and be fast, that's one thing, but we're not seeing that. Nope. Bubba Wallace to the top of the chart, 47-20. There's Noah Gregson on the right. Ty Dillon just ahead, looking from uh, Ross Chastain. I'm gonna show you how Noah Gregson got to the top of the chart. Or excuse me, how he got to the top of the track. <laughs> there is a difference. Ooh. Okay. Ty or somebody checked up ahead. Ty Dillon right there in the 42, the 47, and Ricky Stenhouse checked up. And he was kind of almost like he was anticipating that because he didn't want to be down there, you know, right square with him. He was already up a little bit. And as soon as uh, he got hit in the back by Ross Chastain, he just went ahead and took the line up. Bubba Wallace for Toyota, top of the board ahead of six Chevrolets and Chase Briscoe's Ford. Half an hour to go in the penultimate practice session for the Daytona 500. We've got one tomorrow will be the final practice that we'll have for you on FS1. You see that hood flap. That's just how dirty that air is behind there. Pulls the vacuum, pulls that hood flap up. It's got to be a little bit disturbing because it really is right in front of the drivers, but it isn't that big. They don't. It, I always ask, and it doesn't seem to bother anybody. Get back off here. Nice the old cars here. did it a little bit. Doesn't front. seem to do it quite as much as this one, but. Changes at the top of the board. Michael McDowell now fastest. Chris Buescher, Cody Ware in the 51. David Reagan's up there with Brad Keselowski and David Gilliland. Now McDowell was the last car in that line, so as he sucked up to the pack, that gave him the fast lap. Shared with Chris Buescher. His field is tight, even in practice. There's not a great variance among the top times. A couple of tenths. All right, we're told the Toyota group will pit this time by. Let's see if they work on that pit entry, which is a big unknown. With these wider tires and these huge brakes, how much you need to slow and when to get down to pit road speed. Another part of that that you're going to see, you heard, you said the Toyotas are going to pit and do a practice. You didn't say Denny Hamlin no. or Kyle Busch is going to pit. They're doing it as a group because more than likely, push comes to shove in this race tomorrow or Sunday, they're going to be doing that together. So you need to practice this together. By the way, that car right there in the rear view mirror, Denny Hamlin, he spun out last night. So all of them collectively need to be very efficient under these pit stops. And not this time. Mike, I think you told me they were going to pit, Mike. They're not pitting. But, but honestly, the Hendrick cars did. <laughs> I watched them. The uh, um, and I think the Stuart Haas cars are going to do the same thing. Oh, it was the track house cars. Sorry, Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez both did. Clint, I think we're going to see more team racing Sunday. 
than we ever have in a Daytona 500. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the name of the game. And I don't think that's changed much here. Well, you know, I, I do agree probably more than ever, but it's not like that's not been, you know, the rule of thumb. Let's have a look at our today's Toyota driver profile. And it is three-time Daytona 500 winner Denny Hamlin. 46 career cup wins, including two last season. All right, watch Cody Ware in the 51 coming on to pit road. Did Chris Buescher maybe not know he was turning left? I'd say not. <laughs> and that's exactly those little things like that are exactly. Man, no, that wasn't pitting. He got loose uh -huh. and about spun out. He got loose and shot down on the apron. That wasn't a planned pit stop right there, boys. That was an abort. Or a save. Both. It was a save and then a board. I'm done. I've seen all I need to see. <laughs> and then the radio lights up. We're pitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's what they said. Get him from behind there, Cody. Yeah, I had a little bit of wheeling to it. I think you just tapped me and sent me down the pit zero. That was... Ooh. That's exactly was. what it was. Yep. Close enough. Just bring it on down. We'll go ahead and go up on jack stands and check things over. I was watching last night. It, it seems as if they're more stable. The car, you know, they're able to push one another and feel more comfortable about it, doing it more so in the corners than they are even the straightaways. Kind of makes sense. The car's under a load, has more squat down on the tires, you know, and probably more stable. So as they're able to do that, and, and, and I think that's exactly why the cars, you know, once you get on the straightaway, kind of light on its feet, have trouble when you go to bump traffic. All right, while the Gibbs Toyotas uh, circulate laps, Another Toyota in the garage, Jamie Little. Bubba Wallace turned 10 laps, came in, you were on top of the board, and quickly got shuffled down. But there were a lot of smiles. Does that mean you're ready to put her up until Sunday? Yeah, um, our original plan was just to do some single car runs, and we were just trying out some different stuff. Um, but I told them on the digital, when there's an opportunity to lay down a good PR lap, I'm going to take it. Because they were like, don't take any unnecessary risk, you know, don't run in a pack. And I was like, there's a bunch of cars in front of me. I'm going to hold a lot open here and get a good lap. Are you saying you want to win practice? Hell yeah, it's a win. <laughs> a win's a win. Uh, but no, our car is going to McDonald's Toyota Camry solid. We just went down there to shake it down and uh, felt good. And so we're going to leave her on four stands till Sunday. All right, pretty good. Yeah. Feeling good about chances? Feel really good about it. All right, that's Bubba Walsh in the 23, Mike. Wow. How about that? <laughs> Bubba and crew happy about it as practice rolls on. Coming up next from Daytona, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series lid lifter. They'll crown their first winner of the season. 250 miles of door to door tailgate to tailgate action right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Gear. Ricky Stenhouse on the way out. I think that's fourth gear. Still another one. Pretty weird to think about that fifth gear. That may have been it, though. Must have been. We didn't see him launch off yeah. from a dead stop. So. We're going to ride with Daniel Suarez on to pit road. Little signal. That the, to the car is coming in uh, behind him. Yeah, pitting in hot. Watch the slow one here. You can go to his right if you need to. 
three, two, one there. What do you think, Glenn? So a lot of different things to digest right there. All right, first and foremost, the thing I liked, you saw the camera. That's something new with these cars, camera and the mirror, both. But that camera really showed, that was the first time I saw an in-car where you could see, see right there down low, right by the dash, because it doesn't matter, right? You can you can mount that baby anywhere, but right there down low, I saw the car in his rear view mirror, very clear and very wide. That thing seemed to be big time panned out. The other thing was, I like the gear. You see it number one right there, he's in first gear. This thing's at five speed, down to fourth, down to third, down to second for pit road speed. And I think it was, what was it, around 40, I don't know, maybe, I missed it, maybe 4,600 or something like that. And then the lights, all those red lights, and everybody does those lights differently. Yeah. All right, say the pit road speed's 4,600. That thing will go green. It'll go yellow all the way across, and then it'll go red all the way across. It looked to me like Daniel Suarez runs his lights where he wants them all red, and if it flashes off the screen, you need to get that out of there. you got to slow down. Six cars have yet to practice. Harrison Burton and his dad, Jeff, passing along some wisdom to the rookie who his car got torn up on the last lap last night as he got into a spinning Joey Logano as Logano came off the wall and they're still working on that. They are repairing his car. Here's today's eBay Motors team analysis. Stuart Haas racing with Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola, Chase Briscoe and Cole Custer. 66 wins for that group including a Daytona 500. You've got a few of those. Couple of them, yep. man. Let me tell you, that cat right there behind the wheel is one of the best to ever do it. I know he's only got 66 wins, but he's won in everything he's ever been in. Team Hendrick debrief. Say only 66 wins. By the way, that's a bunch. Yes, it that is. That is a bunch. Yep. That's exactly who I would have. And if I was Rick Hendrick right now, I would have Greg Ives in the middle of this group. He yep. is always. The man with a plan when it comes to speed at Daytona. That's Cliff Daniels with his back to you. Kyle Larson's crew chief. Greg Ives in green. Chad Knauss with the headset around his neck. Can't believe Jeff's not in that picture. You know, the old media photo right there. How he might he, have been. He'll be. He'll be coming. <laughs> Here's Jeff right here. Is that his new bird? <laughs> yeah. We can get his entourage in That's there. That's uh, support for the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds who will do the flyover once again. It doesn't feel right picking on Jeff when he's not standing next to you. You may have that chance later this year. We'll Hope see. so. Hope so. All right, now, Bubba Wallace is thrilled with his car. Kurt Busch did four laps, the best of which was about two and a half seconds on pace, off pace. He just went back out on track, did not complete a lap. Something's not right there with the 45. Yeah, 100%. And I think, again, this is time. You haven't had a lot of time testing or anything else, practice nothing with this new car. You can get out there and validate a lot of things that you find in that simulation and the engineering side of things. So that's what I think they're out there doing, just trying, trying everything they can come up with. Jamie? Martin Shrex Jr., we're just talking about Kurt Busch right now, but you got your laps in. You guys are done for the day. Does that mean you are done for the weekend? It's good timing. Cars everywhere. Yeah, we're done. We uh, just wanted to make our final, you know, checklist run and make sure everything was okay. Uh, Thanks. That's Kurt speaking of. <laughs> it's another Toyota. Sounded good. Uh, but yeah, just make sure everything's good to go on our Bass Pro Tracker Camry, and uh, everything feels good. So um, ready for Sunday. Any idea what we're going to see on Sunday and what it's going to feel like? You raced last night, but everybody keeps saying it'll be a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, it's always different on Sunday. Uh, the money's on the line. Everybody's out there at the same time. That changes things. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, obviously you have to stay out of trouble. That's always key here. But I think it's going to be a lot about strategy and a lot about track position as well. And then when it comes down to the end, you just want to be near the front. So um, same goal as always, be, uh, be around at the end to have a shot at it. Martin Truex Jr. trying to win his first Daytona 500. Martin and uh, Sherry Pollux are going catwalking here in Daytona. Catwalk for a cause. Big fashion show to raise a lot of money uh, for a hospital initiative. Very important to them. And 
fan gets a souvenir. I know he was out fishing, man. You want to talk about Brass Pro Shop? There is a fisherman right there. He was out in Lake Lloyd. Daryl Gwynn had his foundation uh, event this morning. A lot of anglers out there and a lot of good times, raising a lot of good causes down here in Daytona. There's Lake Lloyd. Are you a fisherman? Yeah, I am a champion okay. of that event. Oh, boy. Yes. All right. But not one, but two. I had big fish and the champion, but I didn't make it this year. And I was bummed out because I love Daryl. I love everything that he's about and his cause just changes people's lives. And it's not only that person, it's their whole family. I've seen so many good things happen to, to people with his Daryl Gwynn Foundation. Very proud of, of him and all of his efforts. Joey Logano's run five laps, 49.70, has him toward the bottom of the practice chart here, along with Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney, and Kaz Grala, and Austin Sindrick. So none of the Penske cars uh, showing any speed in this practice. And Harrison Burton, as we mentioned, one of the six drivers who have not been on track. They had plenty of speed last night. I don't wow. think they're worried about the speed. I think yep. they're just worried about, hey, let's go out, put some miles on our engine or drivetrain, wheel bearings, everything. Let's, let's practice maybe pit road speed once or twice, make sure the brakes all feel good. Again, put some miles on this thing and put it in the barn. Chase Briscoe has run the most laps of anyone in this practice session as the sun begins to dip low in the west. Hey, that's B.A., Bobby Allison. A lot of fish in Lake Lloyd. 65,000. Not counting the ones you pulled out of it. That was a long time ago. Guy had a leather helmet on, Mike. That was not so long ago. And this guy, I, hey, hats off to him, but, <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know that I wanted to. So Lake Lloyd that. was not a natural lake. It's what in Florida we call a borrow pit. They dug a hole to build the banking at each end of the speedway and we're near the ocean so the hole filled up with water bill france named it for his friend jay saxton lloyd the local buick dealer and that's how we know it today selling buicks got him a lake christopher bell kyle bush Ooh hold on to it. And Jamie is with one of their teammates. And a lot of the drivers down here talked about dialing in that drivability in this practice session. We're watching your teammates out there now, Denny. Do you feel like you guys accomplished that and are you ready for Sunday? Yeah, I think the, the cars are all drivable. Um, it's just a matter of when you're in those situations where you need to make an abrupt move, is it drivable? So, uh, you know, I think we're there with our FedEx Express camera. You just, uh, you know, keep, keep the dialogue going and see how we can make it better every time we hit the track. Last night we saw in the dual race a lot of guys feeling it out. We saw you have that mishap getting onto pit lane. What did you learn there and what exactly happened? Well, just trying to figure out how, what my breaking point is in traffic versus what it is by myself um you know last night was a little apprehension you don't want to just you know hit the brakes really hard when you're in a pack like that and risk running over a teammate so you hedge yourself out and then realize you're not going to make pit lane so um there's, there's there's all kinds of things that you can learn and what we learned from last night that we were applying today so uh overall I feel like we're in a good place all right denny hamlin looking for daytona 500 win number four thanks jamie what'd you see there larry well, and he talked about it in the media center. When you go back and look at that, he was so far out. He was about to not make the commitment box, and that's when he yanked it left, got on the brakes, and the thing just spun out. He addressed it last night in the media center, took full, full blame for what went on there. Yeah, you see the box right there. He was clearly way outside of it and had to make a pretty, pretty significant move down to the inside to get inside, all four inside that box, by the way, and almost got into his teammate Martin Truex as well. That could have been a lot bigger than it was. So only one Toyota in the 24 fastest speeds in this practice. That's Bubba Wallace, who we heard from earlier. But it doesn't sound like there's a lot of concern in that camp about it. I don't think so. I, I think 
you know, again, we saw the duels. That was half packs. They're all going to be out there on Sunday. You're going to be able to move and utilize air, a three wide pocket, things like that. You see guys working on that bump draft, you know, really working on trying to push as hard as they can. And again, it really takes me back to what we were talking about with these cars being under load right in the middle of the corner. Every time those cars get squirrely, it's entering the corner or exiting the corner. It seems like when they're wanting to step out, taking that load off the car and wants to get light. Cody Ware, you saw it with Christopher Bell coming off the corner. It seems like that as they transition out of that load off that banking, thing wants to step out if somebody's on their bumper. So the top 10 in this practice include eight Fords, the Toyota of Wallace and the Chevy of Noah Gregson. Here's some William Byron audio. Get this, they'll have to drag a little of the straightaways. The five can't quite keep up there. Yeah, they all decided they want William to try to stay wide open as much as possible. Then they're just going to keep trying to boost behind him to boost everybody. So. This is exactly what I felt like the Fords were being able to do a little bit more efficiently with their draft. And when they were the four Fords in a row, didn't seem like these Chevrolets could do it. So what they want him to do, first they thought maybe he needs to drag the brake and pull back to them. Now they said, stay wide open, let us do the work behind you and see if we can push one another to your bumper. About an extra 100, 200 RPM on the trailing car there, Alex Bowman. The thing I liked right there, you saw Alex Bowman had to bail out of the gas. As he really got to the nine car and pushed him, he had to bail out of the gas because he hit him very hard. That's something you can do with these cars. You know, before when we had carburetors underneath them, you kind of had to drag the brake because if you climb back, if you bailed out of the gas and climbed back in it, it seemed like it took time. You know, the thing wanted to fall on its face. It took time. You'd lose a lot of momentum in doing that. Now these guys can bail out of the gas and jump right back in it. No harm, no foul. Chase Elliott dragging the brake just a little bit there. But I see Larson dragging the brake back to Chase. Okay. Getting away from him with William. They're going to trying to get together the 48 and the 9 are together. They're going to push to the 5 and see if they can get to the 24. Just can't quite master it here. But that's what this practice is for, right? This is practice. Now you see the 5 get right to his bumper. It's all about, this is probably what they're going to see, you know, working together as, as, with your allies, with your teammates in this Daytona 500. And we have to make sure we figure out how to do this as efficiently as possible. That's pretty efficient right there, Mike. Looks it. <laughs> Four and a half to go in this practice. Rick Hendricks Chevrolets back out doing what they did at the start of practice, finding a way to be fast as a group. Now, their fastest laps are 22nd and on down in the order of fast laps, even with all this bumper tag going on, trying to boost each other's speed just a bit. has not shown the speed as teammate Bubba Wallace has. Jamie? Yeah, you guys were talking about Kurt earlier. So, Kurt, were you battling anything in particular out there in that practice? Uh, we were messing with our radios for a new team with a new frequency. And now with all the action here or airport, we're, we haven't heard much of each other on the radio. And so we reroute, rerouted the wiring and the antenna, uh, did a systems check with uh, the Camry engine and TRD group. And so everything's good. And we made one little change to see if there was any speed and it was slower. We're ready to go. We're ready for the Daytona 500. Uh, thanks to Denny Hamlin, Michael Jordan, Monster Energy, Toyota. It has a good vibe and a good feel right now. So we're not even going to go out tomorrow. All right. Well, Kurt Busch is ready to go upstairs. He's going in the booth for the Truck Series race coming up tonight. All right. Trucks are next here on FS1. Opening round of their season. Always exciting here at Daytona. One of the wildest races, maybe of the year. Of any year. Look at that hood flap. Thank God for that tether, you know, the tether up there holding that thing on. I think you're gonna, tethers are gonna get their money's worth. 
the work cut out for him on Sunday. Ross Chastain leading Daniel Suarez. And on the practice chart, they are 18th and 20th. Ahead of this group, in fact, the Chevrolets are all in a group from eight, from 13th down to 24th are all Chevrolets on the speed chart. See, as for soon this as practice. that thing come off the corner, it got a little bit squirrely right there. Now they're backed in. You got to figure it out now. This is what I was talking about. Put the five in front. The nine is able to push him a little bit more. Maybe they're faster, more efficient this way. You got to figure that combination out because one of them will be better than others. 4760 last time by fastest lap in this session 4670 by Michael McDowell. And the red and black flags are out signifying an end to this third practice session. Eric Almirola ran 33 laps the most of anyone. Uh, the Hendrick and the Gibbs cars 26 or 27 laps apiece. And we'll be back with more from Daytona and Cup Practice. Hey, Clint, is there anything happening here Sunday? Daytona 500, my favorite day of the year. The biggest race in stock car racing kicks off at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. So three practices so far, and Michael McDowell has been top of the chart in I, two of the three. I know we haven't been doing this very long. Who was that cat that won last year? You know, the Daytona 500? Same song. Oh, that guy. First verse. Yep. Two-time winner of practice. Last year's <laughs> Daytona 500 champion. Can he do it again? In fact, the top six times on the chart are all Fords, as are eight of the top ten. McDowell, rookie Todd Gilliland, David Reagan, Chris Buescher, Brad Keselowski, Cody Ware, then the Bubba Wallace Toyota, Chase Briscoe and Eric Almirola, and Noah Gregson Chevrolet. Uh, the second 10, mostly Chevys, down through 24th spot with the Hendrick cars. And the Toyotas of Joe Gibbs even further down the chart, 25th through 29th. Not really an indication of how they'll race here on Sunday. We may get a better idea in final practice tomorrow. Coming up next on FS1 is NASCAR race day, and then the Camping World Truck Series opens their season tonight here on FS1.